the walking stick symbol of backpackers and hikers everywhere. In recent years, it has become fairly popular to replace the venerable walking stick with a set of trekking poles because they're much lighter and offer other functions than the good old walking stick did. But there's just something about having a good solid walking stick in your hand that gives you confidence, makes you feel like a real hiker. However, the walking stick does come with some challenges. For example, it's a big giant stick. They can be rather heavy and unwieldy. And if you don't want to carry it for a while, it's not very easy to strap this onto your backpack Further, if you have a walking stick that is very special to you, like this one that my dad made for me, you really don't want it to get broken or worn down from use. Now, I personally typically prefer trekking poles when I really need something in my hands to help me hike. However, recently I have discovered a few walking stick alternatives that I have found pretty interesting, and I'm going to share them with you now. I am Doug, this is Backcountry Pilgrim, a channel all about hiking, camping, backpacking, and the gear that goes with it. The pieces of gear that I'm going to go over in this video are all walking stick alternatives. So rather than just going out and picking a stick up off the ground and hoping that it'll work for you, these are all pieces of gear that might help you out in a way that a standard walking stick would not. On a backpacking trip earlier this year, I managed to leave my trekking poles in the truck and we were looking at a 3,000 foot descent on the very first day on fairly rugged, steep trails. So I ended up just finding a stick on the ground and it performed admirably as a walking stick to get me to the bottom of the canyon. The problem was, just being a stick that I found on the ground, this was a rather heavy, unwieldy piece of gear and I ended up having to leave it behind. A possible solution to that dilemma would have been the Forest Pilot walking stick. Now at first glance, this just appears to be a fairly standard finished walking stick that you could buy in a store, but what makes the Forest Pilot special is that it is actually a three-piece walking stick. Before I show it to you broken down, note that there are some pretty cool features on this. First of all, you have a little compass built into the top. You've got a wolf carving. There's a couple different ones up here in the handle. You also have some paracord wrapped around the stick in case you need it for an emergency. And at the bottom, you have a nice rubber tip that's gonna make it quieter and a little more grippy on the trail or on rock. You finish that off with a little retention lanyard and you've got a pretty decent walking stick. But the main thing about this is that if you are done with it, it can unscrew and be put away in your backpack. This can very easily fit in the side pocket of a backpack or up on top or the bottom. All three pieces, when assembled, make a walking stick that is 55 inches long and weighs 17 ounces. However, you can also just put the top and bottom pieces together to make a nice small walking stick for a kid. 37 inch walking stick. Hiking with the Forest Pilot is about what you'd expect from a walking stick. When it's completely assembled, it feels just like a solid piece of wood. However, it is very light. This entire stick weighs about as much as a standard trekking pole. It felt sturdy, strong. I had no problems with it whatsoever. If you are interested in picking one of these up, I have links in the description below to all the gear I'm gonna show you today. All right, this next walking stick alternative was inspired by one of my subscribers who left a comment on my video concerning trail security. He asked me if I had ever heard of the Black Swift walking stick, and I had not. Black Swift is a company that is making self-defense walking sticks. So I reached out to Black Swift and they were kind enough to send me a walking stick for review, and this is it. This is the Black Swift Raptor. The Raptor is actually one of two sticks that they make, and the difference is in the pommel. The Raptor, as you can see, has a kind of knurled grip, which makes it really easy to hang on to, but it also forms a kind of mace in case you are going to be hitting something with it. The Raven walking stick is the same as this, except that it has a smooth round handle. Now, one thing to note right off the bat is that this is not a standard length walking stick or walking staff size. These are 36 inches long, and they are meant to be used more like a cane. So I tend to think of mine as kind of my urban walking stick. If I'm just out, it's really nice to just kind of have this here. It's fun to lean on. It's very strong. It's very lightweight. And the build quality on this is superb. This is a fiberglass shaft, extremely strong, a polyurethane tip that has still shown basically no signs of wear as much as I've used it. And you've got a nice little lanyard on here 
that actually slides up and down the stick. I'll explain that in a moment. This is a very simple device, and yet it packs a serious punch in case you need it in a self-defense situation. So let's suppose you're taking a stroll around your neighborhood or work on a lunch break, and you are approached by a dangerous looking dog. Having something like this in your hand can give you a lot of confidence because let me tell you, this thing is gonna hurt. But although it's going to hurt quite a bit, it is not necessarily deadly. You have a lot of control over this stick and what you do with it. One concern I had about this particular walking stick is that the fiberglass is so nice and smooth that if my hands were sweaty, I was afraid it would slide out of my hand if I swung it. But that is where this lanyard comes in. If you put it on, you can grip the stick pretty easily. And if you decide to switch hand positions, you can just move it very fast. So now you've got something more like a mace club, but the retention strap is still hanging on to it for you. Now it actually comes with three of these little O-rings that this attaches to, so you can make the position a lot tighter if you want to. Now this walking stick only weighs 10 ounces. I mean, it feels very light in the hand. It moves very quickly, but it packs a serious punch. Now you know that I am not gonna let an opportunity like this go to waste. So I decided to see what the Raptor would do to a watermelon. So if you are carrying a raptor or a raven for self-defense, keep in mind that you have a pretty serious weapon here if you decide to use it in that manner. However, even if you just want something casual to lean on, something to just walk around and have in your hand, this walking stick is so finely crafted, it's, it's just a pleasure just to hold it. And I think if you are interested in self-defense, this is gonna be a lot cooler to carry around rather than just carrying a big stick like I see some people doing, or a big staff that is so unwieldy that you're really not gonna be able to do much with it if you're not a martial arts expert. It looks nice, it's elegant, and it is one of my favorite pieces of gear right now. Now, of all the walking stick alternatives that I discovered while I was doing my research for this video, the one that I was the most excited about getting was the Prime Adventure Tactical Walking Stick. It's basically a metal aluminum stick that is put together in sections and each section is filled with tools or survival supplies. A while back I did a video on survival knives and I talked about one of my favorite things as a kid was the Rambo survival knife. And basically what made this thing so cool was not only was it a really neat looking blade, but the handle opened up, it was hollow, and it had survival supplies and tools in it. Well, imagine if Rambo had a walking stick. This is the Prime Adventure Tactical Walking Stick, sent to me by the company. Again, I appreciate that very much. The main idea with this tactical walking stick is that you not only have a decent sized staff that you can raise or lower depending on how many sections you put in, but every section of the stick has survival supplies included. Now what Prime Adventure sent me was a standard eight section tactical walking stick, but they also included a T-handle that can replace the top and be used more like a cane or a hammer. So whereas the standard tactical walking stick has a compass with a lanyard on top, this can be unscrewed and replaced with the T-handle. Now these individual segments have O-rings inside, so they are waterproof compartments. And as you see now, I have my hammer on one side, glass breaker on the other, which does work, by the way. And I can carry the stick around like this if I like it, or I can remove a couple sections and use it more like a cane. Now, of course, each one of these sections 
is useful because you can either keep things inside the hollow tube, like fishing line or paracord or a survival blanket, but Prime Adventure also sends you some tools that come in several of these sections. Now, each of these tools can also be removed, so you can really set this stick up any way you want to. The tools are fastened to a hub that is threaded, and these will go into the top section, but because they are internal, that won't keep another section from being added on top of it. There are numerous tools that come standard with the tactical walking stick, including a glass breaker, two different screwdrivers, a serrated knife, a whistle, a spearhead, a harpoon, a flint stone for starting fires, a bottle cap opener, a can opener, a saw, and even a spear. I did test out the compass and it seemed to be pointing right exactly where it should. Some of the extras that you can get include rubber tips for the bottom, which is normally just another icebreaker, which is pretty decent for giving you grip on the trail without it just being a straight spike like you find on trekking poles that you know can go deeper into snow and sand pretty quickly. This is actually going to keep you above ground in situations like that. But if you don't want to be walking around hitting that spike every time, they have rubber caps that can go on the bottom of the stick and turn it into a more standard urban style walking stick. One thing I like about these different sections is that each one has this really nice knurled grip. So whether you're holding the stick up high or down a little lower, you can adjust very quickly and you've got a good grip pretty much anywhere you put your hand. Now, given that this tactical walking stick is made of aluminum, I'm sure many of you are wondering how heavy is it? Well, it is not lightweight. With the standard eight sections and tools that come with it, on my scale, this came out to a beefy 53 ounces. Now, to be fair, that's only about a pound more than my standard walking stick here. However, you do need to keep in mind that if you're going to be going long distances with this, it is going to get heavy. But that is also where the sectional nature of this stick comes in handy. It actually comes with a pouch, and believe it or not, the entire tactical walking stick can fit inside here, including all of the tools. So if I get tired of hanging on to this walking stick, just like the forest pilot, I can take it apart and put the various sections in my backpack. Of course, I've just added 53 ounces to my back, but if you think of all the tools you are not going to have to carry in addition to this, you might decide that that is a worthy trade-off. Now, because of its weight, this is the sort of thing that I would probably not carry on a long day hike or any kind of a through hike. However, keeping something like this in my car in case I end up in a survival situation out in the woods, not necessarily too bad of an idea. Having something sturdy that I can fight off a bear with or hunt a deer with its spearhead might seem like a good idea and it's kind of cool to have all of that stuff in one place. So speaking of those tools, how do they actually perform? Well, to be honest, it was something of a mixed bag. I decided to pretend like I was relying on my tactical walking stick to start a fire and so I used the saw to cut some branches, I used the knife to try to make some feather sticks, I use the ferro rod or flint stone as they call it to generate some sparks and it did all right. I would say it's about the quality of a decent pocket knife. So far, so good. However, then I decided that I had to try out the spear. Now, I don't have a lot of practice throwing spears, much less spears that weigh 53 ounces, but I decided to give it a go. Now, my first throw went a little high. It actually bounced off the top of the log that I was aiming at and skidded along the granite until it went into some bushes. You can see the resultant damage here. On my second throw, I was successful and I was very impressed to see that not only did the spearhead sink all the way into the wood, but it managed to keep this 53 ounce spear bouncing up in the air and it did not break off. That is pretty heavy for a very small spearhead. Unfortunately, when I removed the spear from the log, the spearhead stayed in it. When I inspected it, I discovered that rather than being held in by a pin, upon investigation it seemed that the tool was actually being held inside the little screw section, not with a pin, but just with pressure from the slit that the tool goes into. Now this might be fine for just carrying around, 
but that's a pretty serious amount of pressure to put on a small tool like that and really not have much holding it together. After my spear experiment, I decided to put the T-handle on and see how this functions as a hammer. Now, I had already used it to set up my tent and it worked just fine, so I attached this to the entire stick and decided to see what kind of damage it would do to an old rotten log. It broke the log up about like you would expect, but I was disappointed to see that when I got done, it was warped. There was an arch to the stick. Now, I can't tell that there is anything wrong with it. It still seems to seal up just fine, but I have a bend in this now that I can't get out, and that's just a little frustrating, especially when the stick is described as indestructible. I really have not done a whole lot with this, and I already have some big gouges in the metal, I already have a warp in the stick, and I have a broken spearhead. So while I really appreciated the design overall, I think that this isn't maybe quite as indestructible as it's advertised. So, as you can see, the walking stick is definitely not dead. There are a number of cool, traditional alternatives out there that you might want to check out for various situations. I hope this video has been helpful to you. If it has, you know what to do. Like, subscribe, share, and until next time, I am Doug. Thank you for watching.